So as part of my master's graduate project at SDSU, I'm characterizing the habitat of the Dakota skipper butterfly. This butterfly was actually first identified as a species in Volga, South Dakota, so just a few miles away. And it originally occurred from Illinois up to Canada. But as its habitat decreased, the population also decreased. So much so that recently, it was proposed to be put on the federally threatened species list. But you might be asking yourselves, why do I care? And I get that question a lot. And in my head, it translates into, how does the Dakota skipper affect me? And truthfully, it doesn't. It doesn't affect you directly. You do not get food, shelter, or security from the Dakota skipper. But although direct effects are the most obvious, they're not the only effects that should be taken into account. The Dakota skipper is part of a larger prairie ecosystem. The parts of this ecosystem and their interactions we are still classifying and quantifying and learning about. And if you zoom the lens out a little bit farther, you'll see that the prairie ecosystem is part of a larger social ecological system that we are all a part of. And the dynamics of that system we are only beginning to understand. But what we do know is that human well-being is inextricably tied to the resources and services provided to us by natural ecosystems. And I think that's intuitive for most of us. And the biodiversity of species, so the more of these rare species that you have, the better supported are your ecosystem processes and the better supported are the services and resources gained from those ecosystem processes such as direct food production, the pollination and seed dispersal of useful plants, control of agricultural pests and diseases, and climate, or regulation of climate. So by itself, the Dakota skipper might not seem important, but let's put it back into the context of its system. Let's look at its interactions on a broad scale. Let's look at why it's disappearing. So one of the limiting factors for the Dakota skipper is that it needs high quality prairie to survive. So what's pictured on the right, it needs a diverse mixture of native grasses and wildflowers. Currently, high quality prairie remnants are scattered throughout a landscape made up mostly of agricultural crops and degraded pasture land, which you'll see on your right up there. So the distance between remnants is an issue for the Dakota skipper because it only has a one inch wingspan and it's in its adult butterfly stage for three weeks out of the entire year. So it has low mobility. If a remnant where Dakota skippers occur becomes degraded and the population collapses, it's highly unlikely that Dakota skippers from somewhere else will be able to recolonize that patch. So populations are blinking out, and they're not coming back. So the Dakota skipper is really telling us about the status of the tall grass prairie, and it's telling us that there's not that much left, it's in varying quality, and it's so fragmented that its suitability as habitat is decreasing, and not just for the Dakota skipper, but for other prairie species as well. Most famously, we saw a 64% decline in pheasant population last year. And because this affected our state economy directly, it got landowners and policymakers to start a conversation about prairie and habitat and conversion. But we have to be careful not to limit our discussion to just the useful species. The pheasant and the Dakota skipper are part of a larger system we need to acknowledge and maintain, or we will see a decrease in other resources and services. So the Dakota skipper doesn't affect you directly. But we study rare species like the Dakota skipper in order to understand more about the system we live in, in order to check in, in the status of that system, and to make connections between our actions and their consequences. Right now, you can see the eutrophication of rivers and streams due to excess nitrogen and phosphorus in the system. We're seeing the extreme weather events of global climate change, which, are, which is affecting our um, crops from droughts and floods. And let's not forget about past issues that we've had um, with messing with the system too much. The Dust Bowl came about from 
numerous factors, but you know, soil erosion on a large scale. So hopefully through understanding will come preservation. Preservation not just of the Dakota skipper and its habitat, but preservation of the resources and services that we gain from natural ecosystems. So in a larger sense, preservation of ourselves. Thank you. <laughs>